our student director, Emma Wells. Yeah. Hi guys, um, like Ms. Eagle said, my name is Emma Wells. I'm the student director. I'm super excited for y'all to be here tonight and just to get to see this play. We've all worked so hard this semester with every ups and downs of it, and drama's been such a big part of my life these past um, three years that, that I've done at CCS, so I'm super excited for, for y'all to see it, and I hope you guys enjoy. Um, the play is called One Stop Light Town, so let's get started. Yellow, red, and green. So don't stop and go. Looks like everything works up here. Great. Don't tell me you're still upset. Town council who put up this stoplight. Stupid town council. Aren't you on the town council body? Yeah. So what? I got outvoted. I don't see what's so bad about this new stoplight. All it's doing is keeping everybody safe at the busiest intersection in town. Since when is the corner of Main and Third considered busy? Oh, come on now. Ever since they opened up the interstate a few miles north, there's been a lot more traffic come to town. That's just it. They drive right through our town. They don't stop at my store and buy groceries. They don't stop at Polly's and buy a burger. So why are we even bothering to put up a stoplight? Just let them pass us by. Like, time is passing us by. What is that supposed to mean? Bobby, maybe this stoplight's a good thing. Maybe it means that this sleepy old town's finally moving up in the world. You know, Trish, I never figured you for one of those big city types. <laughs> Neither did I. I thought that you were one of us. And who's us, Bobby? You know, Trish, one of us. The us that run the shops and restaurants and have been here for generations. The us that sit outside on hot days drinking icy glasses of lemonade and playing endless games of checkers with our neighbors. The us that know the name of every kid in town and aren't afraid to call them out when they get a little too rowdy. The us that think things here in town are perfectly fine just the way they are and don't see why things have to change. Bobby, I am that one of us. But I also happen to like this new job life. I don't see what's so great about it. The stoplight turns yellow when we need to slow down and check out our surroundings. It turns red when things aren't safe and we need to take a few moments and stop. But when that light turns green, we know that all is well and we're free to go off in a new direction to whatever life has in store for us. I don't know about you, but sometimes I need a reminder to slow down and take in all the great things that life has to offer in this town. But also, that there is a great big world out there and it's okay to go and explore it. I don't need to go explore it. Everything I need is right here. That's great, Bobby. You know, people are going to hate that stoplight. They'll want it taken down. Only time will tell, Bobby. Speaking of time, I've got to be on my way. Holly's oven's on the fritz, and she will have my head if I don't get over there to fix it before the breakfast rush. The whole town will have your head if they don't get their breakfast. Ain't that the truth. I'll see you later, Bobby. See you later, Trish. Stupid stoplight. Who are you talking to, Bobby? Are you talking to that new stoplight town, Bobby? <laughs> Rock at it. Looks fine to me. Looks fine fine to me too, Bobby. You know you really gotta stop talking to an inanimate object. It's not healthy. It was just flashing red at me just a minute ago, I promise. Sure thing, Bobby. Whatever you say, Bobby. Stupid stoplight. <laughs> you saw it flashing at her too, didn't you, Melvin? Sure did, Clarence. Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Chuck. I bet you never saw that one coming. I know, man. It went everywhere. You better hope Mr. Schmidt doesn't find out about that. Sure hope so. What about you, Bill? You and Lucy looked pretty cozy. I don't know about that one, man. What about you, Jim? Well, you know me. The ladies at Central High love them some Jim. Like, like Sally. Like Sally? Yeah, even her. She might have played cool at the dance, but really? you guys know, Sally's desperately in love with me. Is that so? Sally, I didn't see you there. I gathered that. How long have you been standing there? Long enough. Guys, I'll talk to you later. Sally, wait a minute, won't you? <laughs> How could I resist? After all, I'm desperately in love with you. Isn't that right, Jim Matthews? I was just joking around with the guys. Sally, you know how it is. No, I don't. But I'd love to hear more. Enlighten me. Well, you see... Uh, That's what I thought. Won't you at least let me apologize? It's not necessary. Yes, it is. I don't want you to think that that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> you don't want to know what kind of guy I think you are. What is that supposed to mean? You're the kind of guy who makes jokes about the bows I wear in my hair. 
Are you serious right now? <laughs> You're the kind of guy who calls me a brainiac when I raise my hand to answer a question in class. That happened one time. Or maybe two. Or maybe more than two. <laughs> You're the kind of guy who teases me because my dioramas are too good. Okay. You make the rest of us look bad. Did you really have to make a working oil rig with realistic pumps and moving trucks? Hey, I can't help it if I'm detail-oriented. Detail-obsessed is more like it. Why couldn't you just make a baking soda volcano like the rest of us? Hey, if you're content with a piece of minus, who am I to stop you? So if you want to know what kind of guy I think you are, now you know. Well, you aren't exactly green bean queen material yourself. What's that supposed to mean? You're the kind of girl who laughs at me whenever I spill milk on myself at the lunch table. <laughs> You've always been a messy eater. You make jokes whenever my science experiment exploded in my face. <laughs> That's right. You were missing an eyebrow for the entire third quarter. You're the kind of girl who makes fun of a guy for not getting the lead role in a school play. Okay. It wasn't that you didn't get the lead. It was the role you did get. I wasn't feeling well on the day of audition. So you said. I had a cold. I couldn't stop coughing and blowing my nose. Sure, sure. That is the only reason the director didn't give me any lines. You were a gate. I'll have you know. The gate was a pivotal role in the production of Our Town. Pivotal is right. That was a long time ago. That was last year. Well, you've been picking on me ever since freshman year. So what? We've already established that you pick on me, too. Sure I did. Back in second grade? You're the one that's holding a grudge and still picking on me now. How dare you! I teased you when we were eight years old. We were children. You act like a child now. You just can't help yourself, can you? Here we are, all these years later, standing under this stoplight, and you're still calling me names. You started it! I really like your bows, you know. Yeah, well, I think it's kind of cute that you're a messy eater. And I really like how smart you are. I kind of liked when you only had one eyebrow. It made you look a little mysterious. And I also really liked your diorama. I was hoping that you would invite me over after school so I could get a closer look at it. I thought you made a wonderful gate. Can we call a truce then? How do we do that? How about a dance? Does this mean we can't tease each other anymore? I didn't say that. Good, because seriously, Jim, you're a terrible dancer. You have two left feet or something? Really? And I suppose Brainiac like you could teach me a thing or two about dancing? You know it. Unless you're trying to break all of my toes, I think you and I are going to need to get together a few times a week for some dance lessons. You know what I think? What? I think you're desperately in love with me. Of course you do. Hot metal. The smell of burning rubber. The wind in my hair. This one's mine. I can feel it. So, what are the terms? Well, you start right over there, drive to that street, pull around the stoplight, finish our story. First cross line wins. And first the square is a chicken. You look silly, you know. Oh, yeah? Well, your friend looks like a chicken. Stop it. Are you sure this is a good idea? I think it's a great idea. I think it's the best. This could be dangerous, you know. Danger doesn't scare me. Danger's actually my little thing. Your middle name is Winston. Go in the middle of the street. There could be cars driving by. And they'll just have to get out of our way then. Yeah, we were here first. Guys, they wouldn't be able to catch us anyways. We're way too fast. Yeah, but I am faster than you. I'm pretty sure they're not faster than you. We'll see about that, bud. Anyways, what are we racing for again? Pinks. Pinks? Pink slips. You know, like the loser gets the, or the winner gets the loser wheels? Like the keeps? Yeah. Some car stars. You're, you're not going to be backing out, are you? I won't be backing for anything. Good, because I've been wanting some new wheels. Really? You better ask Santa, because you're not going to get mine. I hope you're hungry, because you're about to be coughing on my dust. Don't be hungry, I'm out of today. Alright, what's going on over here? Nothing for you to worry about this team. It looks like you kids are having a disagreement. We ain't picky, Steve. And we ain't having a disagreement. It's totally fine. We're only about to drag race. Is that so? Yep. That's just run around the stop like a bad point. Well, what are you racing for? Pink slips. I see. You don't approve? No, I, I didn't say that. I tried talking about it a bit, but they weren't having it. So all the vehicles road ready? Yep. Gave mine up yesterday. Mine's brand new. Finally saved up. Get it last week. 
And I assume you've scoured the court. It's just Main Street, Miss Dean. We know this road like the back of our hands. Well then, yes, you're ready to race? Any last minute words of advice, Miss Dean? Only this. When racing around the circle of life, be sure to not only seek the rewards that can be found in taking a risk, but also the rewards that can be found in taking your time. What does that even mean? Beats me. Uh, I don't know what you're trying to say. Well, that makes one of us. Guys, enough of this tongue wagging. I came here to race. Can we get on with this already? You ready? I was born ready. You better shake on it. The deal's been struck. Two your vehicles in the men. I don't think you want to stick around the west one, Miss Dean. This might get pretty ugly. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. It looks like the challenges are ready. Here they come with their wheels now. Start your engines, boys. Whenever you're ready. I was waiting for the light turn screen. In three. And they're off! Look at them go! I feel like! Why are you going ahead? I think you see something in the road! Watch out! Whoa! Oh. You didn't win the race, you know, you didn't finish. We could always have a rematch. You'd really like to have a rematch after what just happened. I said we could. Never said win. <laughs> and plus, I found out there's value taking my time. <laughs> Hey, Melvin. Got that right, Clarence. Must be usual. Hustle and bustle on Main Street. I heard church bells ringing a little while ago. Must have been uh, Matthew's wedding. Matthew's wedding? You know, Jim and Sally. Cute kids from dating a couple years ago back in high school. Oh, right. So that was today? Yeah, the whole town was invited. I didn't get an invitation in the mail. That's because it was uh, a. What's his email? No. Electronic invitation from your email. So, so my email invited me to the Matthews wedding? No. No, no, no. Jim and Sally sent the invitation over your email. Why would they do a thing like that? I don't check my email. I don't even know if I have an email. Do you have an email, Melvin? Of course I have email, Clarence. Everyone has an email. Oh. Guys, we didn't see you at the wedding. Our invitations must have gotten lost in the mail. Oh, so we emailed the invitations. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to show you all the pictures when we get back from our honeymoon. See you next week. Bye, guys. Have fun with the honeymoon. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> if they listen to you, that'll be one boring honeymoon. What you talking about, <laughs> Clarence? I'm romantic. Oh, with who? I got lots of lady friends. Is that so? That's so. I'm going to need some proof. I'll get you the proof. <laughs> hey there, Casey. Hi, Clarence. Gonna cross the street anytime soon, Casey? Uh, I'm thinking about it. So, what's the hold up? I'm just waiting for the right time. When is the, uh, right time? When I'm ready. Hey there, Casey. Hi, Trish. Where are you headed? Well, I'd like to go to Loretta's. I heard she's got some uh, great new lemon candies and stuff. You got that right. Those lemon candies are delicious. I heard you ordered them all the way from England. They're called Sherbert lemons. I thought Sherbert was a type of ice cream. Not in England, I guess. They do that in England. They call a car's trunk a bait. They call a water bottle a water bottle. And they call a ladies pacifier. A dummy. Oh, really? I would have thought they called it a melt. Hey! Looks like it's safe to cross now. Are you coming, Casey? Not yet. No! There's nothing to be afraid of. There, there aren't any cars coming. There's never any cars coming. I don't know why we got that silly stoplight in the first place. I'm not afraid. Well, then what are you waiting for? I'm not. Huh? Okay, that makes sense. It does? Yes, it does. Or later, Casey's moment will arrive, and when it does, she will cross that street. That's right. We don't always know when our moment will arrive, but when it does, we just have to be ready. I think I'll try again tomorrow. Same time, same place. Sounds like a plan. 
Well, that's my cue to go. See you later, fellas. See you later, Trish. <sighs> so, getting back to those lady friends of yours, Melvin. What about them, Clarence? When am I going to see that proof? I'll email you. <laughs> <laughs>
Approaching. Stoplight. It's stuck on red. Still, if you have a stoplight that lets me get a decent amount of traffic from the interstate, you definitely aren't from around here. That's right there. Well, that's not true. If you were from around here, I'd know you. This town's so small, everyone knows everyone. Well, it's been a long time since I've been home. You got off this place? You actually left? I did. Well, tell me how you did it. Well, one day I packed my suitcase and I left. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> and you never looked back? Not at first, no. I love living in the city. Working all day, coming home to my very own apartment at night, trying new foods, meeting new people, seeing new things. That sounds amazing. No one around here has even heard of culture. Right now, the cinema is playing a double feature of Groundhog Day and What About Bob? <laughs> Great flicks. Little Murray's the best. Slaps at comedy and gross out humor. You can do better than that. True, there is a lot of culture in the city, but there's also a lot of dirt and noise and loneliness. How can that be possible? There are way more people living there than here. Well, yeah, but in the city, everyone's always coming or going. You can walk the street all day and not run into one person you knew. No one takes a moment to slow down or even to stand still. I think that's why I came back here. I think I just need to stand still for a little bit. But I don't want to stand still. Not here, anyway. I'm just so sick of everything in this town. The shops, the stoplight, the people. The people? I always thought the best thing about living in a small town was how nice everyone is. Yes, that's it. That's it exactly. Everyone is nice. All the time. Too nice, if you ask me. Is there really such a thing as too nice? Yes. Some days it feels flat out suffocating to go into town. Yeah, yeah, I, I do remember feeling exactly how you feel before I left town. So you get it. You understand why I'm leaving. But the thing about this town is they have so much love that they can spare. Even with that fact, no matter where I look, everything is the same. I mean, there's Bobby's grocery store with the same old boring chicken and potatoes. Isn't there a requirement that everything she sells is an ingredient for a casserole? How about some ethnic foods from foreign lands? Some exotic produce. Heck, I'd even take some medium spicy salsa for Whoa. a change. Whoa, slow down. Medium spicy salsa? Don't get too wild. <laughs> or the pharmacy, where the most interesting thing that happened there was a few years ago when this store of the sign started stocking lemon candies from England. Well, you did say you wanted food from a foreign land. Or the cinema that refuses to show a movie from this century. You got me there. Bill Murray is the best. A genius, actually. But there are great movies not starring these comedic talents that y'all are missing out on. And then there's Polly's Diner. Hold on. I'm going to stop you right there. Polly's is fine just the way it is. How would you know? Maybe it's changed. I mean, you haven't been there for years. Polly's is an institution. The club sandwiches, the chocolate malts. I've been dream dreaming about these malts for as long as I can remember. I mean, yeah, I guess the malts are pretty good. And there's something nice about wearing exactly what drugstore has your favorite women candy in stock. Yeah, I mean, I mean Miss Loretta always makes sure to have a bunch in stock since the whole time it's crazy for them. And sometimes boring ingredients like chicken and potatoes is the thing that leads to inspiration. Some of the best girls I ever had to do were made with boring ingredients like chicken and potatoes. Really? I mean, I have looked up some new recipes online that look pretty interesting. Maybe I could try a few of them out. And if you have not seen Groundhog Day, I don't know if there's that much right before I can save you. Fine, I'll go see Groundhog Day. So you'll stay there. I just... I just don't know. I'm sure there are many people who would miss you if you left. Who? Well, your family, for one. But all I'm saying is that there's reasons to stay and there's reasons not to. Life's not as simple as that stoplight. <coughs> You're not going to have a stoplight telling you when to come and when to go. I don't have that right now. If I let that stupid stoplight decide, I'll be stuck in this town for the rest of my life. All I'm saying is you have to think about what your reasons are and make sure you're making your decisions for the right ones. I know it seems like you have so much life that you want to live and you can still do that, but is it really worth risking everything that you have right here, right now?
That's the decision that you have to make. It's kind of late for a stroll, isn't it? Tell me about it. I'm out taking the baby for a walk while my wife is at home getting some sleep. You look exhausted. I barely even know my own name. I think it's Jim. Well, it's nice to meet you, Jim, but you do know you stopped walking, though. I'm afraid if I stop moving, then the baby will wake up. Well, you have to stop moving sometime. That remains to be seen. Speaking of, is this light ever going to turn green? I think it's broken. It's been on red all night. Yeah, we got it some years back, but we still don't get much traffic through town. I guess some things never change. I guess not. Well, good night. Good night. So, have you made your decision? I think I'm going to stay. For now, anyways. What made you change your mind? If I'm going to leave this town, I want it to be because I have something I'm running toward. Not something I'm running away from. I wish someone would have given me that advice when I left town. Do you think you would have stayed? Who knows? All that's important is that I am here right now, in this moment. And I think that's where I want to be. I mean, fair enough, I guess. I would better get home, you know, before my mom and dad start to worry. Uh, thanks for the talk. Good night.
Friday night, not till the 19th. Today is the 19th. No, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. I've got all dressed up for nothing. Afraid so. <laughs> well, this is just great. Oh. <laughs> if you're here for the parade, you're out of luck. What do you mean you're here? Like, where's the worst? Yes, at? I know. I'm here, and someone is going to pay for this mistake. I am the green bean queen, and I will not be humiliated like this. Then just don't be. Of course I'm humiliated. Here we are in the middle of the street. Me in the stupid crown. You in that get up. <laughs> I'm the drum major. <laughs> okay, that means nothing to me. The drum major. Still nothing. What about this? Ready? Wow. Oh. <laughs> 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 I mean, I guess you're in the band, but you don't have an instrument. I don't even. <laughs> but you're the drum major, and you should carry a drum or something. No. <laughs> I don't I need a drum. I'm a drum major. No drums. I am the big chief, the head honcho, the grand poobah, the grand poobah. Okay. Kind of like, I'm what you could say, the king of the band. How you're the queen of green beans. I am not the queen of the green beans. Then what are you green of? Come on! Everyone knows about the green bean queen! The green bean queen. I'm not some business. I'm not private. I'm the queen of the entire harvest festival. I get it. You do? Because I never understood why we needed a queen, a uh, no queen, for a harvest festival. Yeah. If she's the queen of the harvest festival, she must have harvested Those green beans. No way! I didn't harvest any green beans! Do you know what all that dirt would do to my nails? Ugh! So then what did you do to be queen? I won a contest. <laughs> oh, you know, the usual. Talent, question and answer, formal wear. So like, what do you do? <laughs> I get to ride in a float on the parade. What else? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm assuming your reign as queen goes until next year. Yep. So, like, what are you going to do after the parade? <laughs> I don't know. I never really thought about it. None of the other queens did anything after the parade was over. You could be the first one that does. Okay, but, like, what would I do? I like to think when you're given a leadership role, you can use it to do a little good in the world. Well, what are you going to do now that you're the Be drum major. the drum major. <laughs> I see the kids lying in the parade every year, wishing that little kids had an instrument of their own to play. So, being the drum major, I'm getting all the band kids together to teach all the little kids how to play any instrument that they want to. Oh, that's a really great idea. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I guess you're really passionate about that. Yeah, you have anything you're really passionate about? I love to read. What type of books do you like to read? Oh, all kinds. Drama, science fiction, romance. Oh, me too! You're like a good romance novel, don't you, Clarence? I'm in love with love, Melvin! What can I say? My eyes are getting bad, and I don't get to read much anymore. Do you think you might like to come to read to me sometime? I would love to! That's such a great idea! I know a perfect senior citizen that you would love for a young person to come and read to them. <laughs> awesome! That's perfect! I can get all the other girls from the contest to help me. That way, every senior citizen is paired up with somebody to read to them. I see in your sense. I mean, that's a great idea. <laughs> so, it looks like the Green Bee Queen knows what she's going to do after the parade's over. Oh, the parade. I forgot all about it. I guess I'll just get all dressed up again next week. No big deal. Sounds like you're not very embarrassed for showing up on the wrong day. Embarrassed? Why should I be embarrassed? I'm the Green Bee Queen. And for once, that might mean a little bit more than riding on a float and wearing a crown. And? 
obviously green beans. <laughs> it never had anything to do with her green beans. Oh, green beans. Sure you did. If you're not doing anything, do you want to help me get started on my proposal for my senior reading initiative? Sure, just lead the way. I thought you were the drum major. Shouldn't you be leading the way? Let's go. That one was pretty good. <laughs> Those two aren't in love. Not yet, anyway. Bah! <laughs> this is a whole other side of you I thought I'd never seen. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm like an onion, Melvin. Peel back my layers and you'll find the pride no, under there. Don't ever ask me to kill you again. <laughs> oh, hey, Trish. Hey there. Get those, uh, Orbeez for your stick? Sure it is. And did you find a way to give Bobby a little surprise shower? Now, Clarence, you know I never do something like that to poor Bobby, right? I drop. Oh, hey there, Sally. Hey, Trish. Hey, All right, come on and let's go see if Miss Bobby has those apples you love so much. Yay! Bye! Hey, we'll come back later. Oh. Can't you two find somewhere else to sit and bother everybody? Oh, Bobby, don't be such a wet blanket. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, that was a good one. there. <laughs> Same time tomorrow, Clarence? Same place, Melvin. Dinner was good. Yeah, Polly knows how to make a good burger. Sorry it wasn't a fancier meal for date night. Oh, that's okay. I didn't want to leave the kids for too long anyway. Yeah, I kind of figured. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Don't worry. Is there anything else you want to add? This feels like a trap. Oh, why would I be setting a trap for you, Jim? I'm your wife. Exactly. <laughs> this is about the thing from the other night, isn't it? The thing? You know what I'm talking about. Don't act like you don't remember. I don't know what the thing is. You don't see anything that isn't right under your nose. Really? And how do you figure that? I figure every time I trip over your shoes that you didn't see laying on the floor of our bedroom. You've got to be kidding. Facts are facts. Well, we wouldn't even be discussing the thing if you weren't such a control freak. I cannot believe you just said that. And by that, I just mean that you like things a certain way. Is that so? And like usually, your way is good. Usually? It's just maybe you could be a little bit more flexible when it comes to the thing. <gasps> I'm gonna need a minute. Okay, Sally, don't you think you're overreacting just a little bit? Or not? <laughs> you know I love your mother, right? Nothing good can come from a conversation that starts like that. <laughs> Maybe we should just go home and forget about the whole thing. No, we need to make a decision about the thing once and for all. Very well. I love your mother, but that thing is ugly. Horrifying is more like it. It's not that bad. It's the stuff of nightmares, Jim. The face looks like a demented orangutan. But the worst part has to be the wings. Are you sure that those are wings? What else could they be? Good point. We can't keep it, Jim. But she designed it herself. I know, and I've been meaning to talk to you about getting someone for her to talk to to work out her demons or whatever. And she made it with her own two and one. Doesn't mean we can't get rid of it. Trash days tomorrow. Or maybe we should bury it very, very deep in hollow ground. We might want to burn some sage over it, too. Now we're, we're talking. talking. But what would she come over and... What would she say when she comes over and doesn't see it? You know she's going to look to see if we displayed it. We could just tell her it's out being cleaned. Can you even clean something like that? It's made out of bird seed and coffee grounds. Good point. Maybe we should tell her a local art gallery is considering it for an upcoming show. Yeah, I wouldn't believe that either. If she comes over and doesn't see it, we're going to break so hard. Then there's only one solution. What's that? We just never invite your mother to our house ever again. Nice try. I guess we'll just have to display it when she comes over. That seems like a good compromise. But I wouldn't put out the second she's gone. In the basement, no the garage, no the shed. 
But we're definitely going to need some of that sage you were talking about. Definitely. Well, this looks familiar. The side of our first date. That was a date. Yes, it was. But we argued the whole time. Well, we argued tonight. This was supposed to be a date. True. Can we call it truce then? How do we do that? How about a dance? Does this mean we can't tease each other anymore? I didn't say that. Good, because you're still a terrible dancer, Jim. Do you have two left feet or something? Really? And I suppose Brainiac like you can teach me a thing or two about dancing. You know it. I think you and I are going to need to get together a few more times a week for some dance lessons. You know what I think? What? I think you're desperately in love with me. Of course you do. must be the incomparable Sally with the best burgers or whatever in town. It's Polly. And yes, you heard that? Well, I'm Flash. Uh, you came across. The stoplight just changed. There's not a car in the road. Uh, well, better take your side of the road. Just in case. Okay. Um, I know that we have competing restaurants and like mine's totally better, but I hope we can be friends. Um, why? So you can steal my recipes? Why would I have to do anything like that? I'm sure your burger's okay or whatever, but I have a recipe that I'm really proud of. Really? What's on it? Well, it starts with a patty made from 100% Kobe beef that <laughs> I... Let's see what's so great about Kobe beef. Ground chicken's always been fine with me. Anyway, patty is then placed on a brioche bun and spread with a thin, scratch-made aioli. Oh, ooh. Aioli. <laughs> it's mayonnaise, for goodness sake. Don't call it aioli. Okay, fine. It's spread with mayonnaise. <laughs> That's better. Anyway... On top of that, I put heirloom tomatoes, artichoke hearts, crispy pancetta, and you <laughs> gotta be kidding me! Artichoke hearts, crispy pancetta? Stop, this isn't even a burger anymore. And finally, my key ingredient, a warm, farm raised sunny side. <laughs> okay, now you're joking. Eggs? On a burger? Stop, you're pulling my leg. It, no, no, it's Flash's egg burgers, it's oh, right yeah. on the sign. Mm -hmm. Well, eggs won't get a breakfast, but you're a burger. I disagree. I feel like there's nothing quite like a warm, runny egg yolk dripping down the side of a juicy burger. Yumbo! That does sound good! Oh, make You can't be serious. <clears throat> I imagine it's kind of like a juicy special sauce for the burger. See? Unlike some people, he gets it. See? I get it! Don't look at me, I'm a diehard college there. I don't see why you new chef doesn't change everything. The classic burger was just fine the way it was. Sometimes change is good, okay? I disagree. Well, why don't we have a taste test? These two seem to be fine connoisseurs of creative cuisine. You just try one of ours and let us know what they think. I got a olive burger right here. And I can find one of mine if I can just... Uh, sorry. Hey, I was eating that! <laughs> and here's one of mine. Here goes nothing! <laughs> Prepare to be destroyed. These two have been loyal customers for years and they'll never choose your burger from mine. We'll see about that. Try this first. Mmm! Classic! Goosey and flavorful. <laughs> Yum -o. That's what I thought. Now try his burger. <laughs> call it that. 
What's going on here? What about the drag race? Is that so? Yep. Fastest one around the stop line. Wins. Well, let me give you some advice. Have fun. That's it. That's it. How can that be? We have adults telling you all the time to do things like be careful and slow down. And those things are important, but something that we forget, especially as we get older, is the thrill of the race. What it's like to be a kid and feel the wind in your hair. So if you're asking me for my advice, that's just it. Have fun. I think we can do that. Well, we already were. Sure looks like it to me. And cut. I really can't say that was the direction I was planning to go, but I think it worked out really well. Thanks for stepping in. Well, of course. But you guys aren't really going to drag race cars, are you? I am nowhere near dumb enough to let those guys drive cars. We're just going to put it all in video. All right, then. I guess I'll leave you to it. And I'll make sure to get you those tickets. I'd appreciate that. All right. <coughs> Final scene and action. Do we, do we agree on the term yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to go real quick? I think so. Yeah, take on it. The deal's been struck. Do your vehicles. for a misdemeanor at set forth by our very own town council. You should know better than anyone, Bobby, seeing as you're, you know, on the town council and all. Stoplight hat coming. Looks like it's stoplight one, Bobby zero. Once again. I guess it's up to me to direct traffic until Trish comes to fix the light. Has the 730 bus out of town come through yet? Not yet. Oh, good. Do you have everything you need, sweetheart? I do. My roommate has everything shipped to our dorm, except for what I have here. I can't believe it. The day is finally here. Neither can I. It's gonna be okay, Sally. She'll only be away at college. She can visit us whenever. You'll come home on the weekends, won't you? Of course I will. Besides, I will have some laundry after all. <laughs> Never thought I'd be so excited to wash your smelly old laundry. Hey, okay, that's right, Casey. <laughs> I will. Just give me a minute. Um, have some pretty yet? Not yet. Oh, you. You leaving town? Yes, I am. What are you leaving for? Are you running away from the small town? I'm not running away from this town. I have something I'm running toward. I like that. That makes me feel better about going. Me too. Well, that's about as good a reason to leave as a guy. Thanks, Clarence. Hey, what's everybody doing out here? <laughs> and what happened to the stoplight? The <laughs> body happened. It's a little distraction of public property. That stoplight had it coming. It's alright, it's easy enough to fix. Sorry, you're strange. You know, you don't have to fix the stoplight. You can always just take it down, you know. Nice try, Bobby. But we don't even need the stupid stoplight. We don't any traffic come through town anyways. But we could, Bobby. We could. And when we have something that's a symbol of better things to come, don't you think it's important we hold on to it? I think I'm ready now. Well, there's something like Casey. Here I go. I did it! I did the first time! Oh, uh, that'll be the 730 bus out of town. 
little time to go. Good luck at school. We love you. Good luck in the big city. Thanks. Good luck in the big city. <laughs> I can say goodbye to Clarence. Thank Don't, you, Don't. I'm tired of getting <laughs> Brad Sparks as Teen Kid 1 and Drum Major. <laughs> 